is it? It's Santa Claus. <laughs> and it's Elf. Santa! Oh my god! Santa here? I know him. I know him. We're not gonna hurt you. No, no. Got some nice presents for you. Be a good little fella now and open the door. Who are you? No time to explain. We gotta go. I've got bad news, sir. What is it? The prisoners have escaped. <laughs> to you, that may seem like bad news, but to me, it's good news, because they are now going to lead us right to their secret base. <laughs> Blood alone moves the wheels of history! Have you ever asked yourselves in an hour of meditation, which everyone finds during the day, how long we have been striving for greatness? Not only the years we've been at war, but from the moment, as a child, when we realized that the world could be conquered, it has been a lifetime struggle, a never-ending fight, I say to you, and you will understand that it is a privilege to fight. We are warriors. We must never acquiesce, for it is together. Together that we prevail. We must never cede control of the motherland, for it is
Welcome back, gentlemen. Glad to see you're all still alive and in one piece. Sir, incoming transmission from the TAN. Greetings, Green Army. Don't celebrate your daring escape so soon, for you have now led my entire army right to your secret base. Prepare to meet your doom. We're under attack. Gather all the troops immediately. Now let's set the record straight. There's no argument over the choice between peace and war. But there's only one guaranteed way you can have peace, and you can have it in the next second. Surrender. Admittedly, there's a risk in any course we follow other than this, but every lesson of history tells us that the greater risk lies in appeasement. And this is the specter our well-meaning liberal friends refuse to face, that their policy of accommodation is appeasement. And it gives no choice between peace and war only between fight or surrender. If we continue to accommodate, continue to back and retreat, eventually we have to face the final demand, the ultimatum. And what then? When Nikita Khrushchev has told his people, he knows what our answer will be. He has told them that we are retreating under the pressure of the Cold War, and someday, when the time comes to deliver the final ultimatum, our surrender will be voluntary, because by that time, we will have been weakened from within spiritually, morally, and economically. He believes this because from our side he's heard voices pleading for peace at any price, or better rev than dead, or as one commentator put it, he'd rather live on his knees than die on his feet. And therein lies the road to war, because those voices don't speak for the rest of us. You and I know and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. If nothing in life is worth dying for, when did this begin? Just in the face of this enemy? Or should Moses have told the children of Israel to live in slavery under the pharaohs? Should Christ have refused the cross? Should the patriots at Concord Bridge have thrown down their guns and refused to fire the shot heard round the world? The martyrs of history were not fools. And our honored dead who gave their lives to stop the advance of the Nazis didn't die in vain. Where then is the road to peace? It's a simple answer after all. You and I have the courage to say to our enemies, there is a price we will not pay. There is a point beyond which they must not advance. This is the meaning in the phrase of Barry Goldwater, peace through strength. Winston Churchill said the destiny of man is not measured by material complications. When great forces are on the move in the world, we learn we're spirits, not animals. He said there's something going on in time and space and beyond time and space which, whether we like it or not, spells you. You and I have a rendezvous with death. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness. Sir, you need to see this. We need an airstrike down here immediately.
surrounded and we have no way to stop their transformer tank. Anybody have any ideas? We might not have a weapon that can destroy it, but they do. What do you mean? He's saying we can use their super tank to destroy their transformer tank. Come on, let's go. You're under arrest, Colonel Blitz. Ha ha ha, you'll never catch me.